Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Market Chat. My name is Richard Moglin, and joining me today is one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter, Trader Amuk. We're going to cover a lot, including his background, how he looks at charts, manages positions, and also journals his trades. Amuk, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Hey, Richard. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Um, when I, whenever I speak to you, uh, we've had some constructive conversations. So looking forward to the session. Same here. And why don't we get started with a little bit about your background. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you kind of got into this, how you got started with trading, and maybe some key learning moments along the way. Yeah, um, I don't know if I've told you this, but I started off in 2015, uh, like any other trader. I had uh, beginner's luck uh, and uh, was able to uh, uh, make some money uh, with it. But uh, later, like any other trader, I made a lot of mistakes and uh, lost all those gains. And um, um, I was uh, I studied a few strategies uh, after that, after I lost the money, which I made. And then um, uh, it went back and forth. I experimented a lot uh, for two more years. Uh, and by 2018, uh, I joined uh, Traders TV's uh, Art of Trading community. And uh, after that, uh, after I started following him and after um, I started trading along with this community, um, I gained some confidence and uh, that's where my trading took off. Um, I was able to absorb whatever he taught me and uh, uh, yeah, that's where uh, it took off for me. And uh, since uh, 2018, uh, October, I've had around... Uh, 24 green months now, um, up until uh, December. Fantastic. And outside of the training community, was there any kind of books or webinars that helped you along the way? Or really, it was that resource that uh, really made you understand how to trade and manage risk? Yeah, I've not read many books as such, uh, like any many other traders. Uh, I've just read two or three books. And two of my favorites are uh, the How to Make Money with Stocks and uh, from William O'Neill and... Uh, uh, Trade Like a Stock Market Wizard by Mark Winnevini. Uh, those are the two only books uh, which I've read multiple times and uh, which has helped me a lot to uh, fine tune my uh, trading style and uh, trading strategies. Perfect. And how would you describe your trading style? Because O'Neill is more of a position trader, uh, but I guess sense that you're taking profits a little bit more aggressively and, and are more on the swing side. Is, is that true? Yeah, uh, in 2018, I just switched to swing trading. And since then, I've not changed my style. I didn't want to jinx anything. And um, as it was working for me, um, I stuck to it. And uh, uh, so I've just been doing swing trading up until now. Perfect. And uh, what kind of tools or resources or, or software rather do you use as a part of either your screening or actual charting software that you use day to day? Yeah, charting software, um, I share uh, share it on Twitter uh, almost every day. Um, I use uh, stockcharts.com. Um, I've uh, felt that uh, uh, their UI is very uh, interactive and uh, uh, it's aesthetically pleasing. So uh, I've stuck to stock charts uh, since three years now. And uh, I also use TradingView, uh, TrendSpider, and MarketSmith. Um, I use MarketSmith mainly for uh, screening for stocks. A lot of um, uh, custom uh, built uh, scanners there, so I use that to scan my charts now. And um, I used to use uh, stockcharts.com, but uh, um, Market Smith, uh, Market Smith has a, a good way of uh, screening uh, uh, fundamental uh, 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 growth related stocks, so I use that uh, often right now. Perfect. Uh, so, why don't we get into your training strategy? So uh, you, you prepared an excellent presentation. So why don't you go ahead and share that and we'll, we'll go through the slides and I'm sure I'll have questions along the way. So uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I just put some few, a few slides together and just talk about my trading style, uh, my position management and uh, the journey, journaling which I do. First thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the reasons for my success. Um, uh, I, as I said, I've had... Uh, uh, straight 24 green months in a row since 2018, October. So a uh, uh, reason for those uh, have been listed here. Um, these are just brief, but it, uh, along with this, there are many 
other things which go into it. Uh, the first one is uh, to make a consistent profit. So uh, uh, what helped me uh, through these two years have been uh, the consistency, which I was able to trade with. Uh, um, I, uh, I try to avoid uh, bigger drawdowns in my account and uh, um, just consistently uh, maintained uh, good discipline. And uh, I was able to uh, stay green throughout. Uh, so that was one uh, major reason for my success. And other one is uh, uh, post analysis or journaling of my trades. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I used to share, uh, I used to uh, journal my trades uh, every month and I used to share it on um, the public Twitter feed. So uh, that helped me a lot uh, in improving my. Uh, trading strategies and fine tuning my trading. Uh, whenever I used to make a mistake, uh, when I journaled it, um, I was able to uh, go through those mistakes and uh, make sure that I, uh, I don't make it again. Uh, so journaling, journaling helped me a lot. Um, and uh, other uh, reason for success is um, I came up with a rules-based system, um, buy rules, sell rules. Um, and I just stuck to it. I didn't, I didn't switch my strategies. Um, I stuck to the rules which I came up with and uh, I blocked the noise elsewhere. Um, there's a lot of noise in Twitter um, where, where many traders share their uh, 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 trading journey. So um, I, blocking all that noise and just sticking to my rules uh, helped me a lot. And um, I also uh, avoided big drawdowns. Um, Thankfully, uh, my biggest loss ever has been uh, just 11 or 12 percent drawdown uh, in these two years. So, um, avoiding those big drawdowns has uh, helped me uh, with my uh, with uh, maintaining my uh, consistency and profits as well. Absolutely, and I have a quick question about your journaling. So. Um... What do you keep track of when you when you enter a trade, and and how are you actually keeping a journal? Are you screenshotting the chart at that time, taking notes on there, and what kind of criteria are you keeping track of each time? Each time you buy, yeah, or it's sell? just the yeah, it's just the buy and sell. Um, I uh, um, the software I used to use didn't have uh, option to update the chart, so um, I occasionally uh, updated my charts as well to keep track of what I was doing wrong. Um, and what I was doing right. So uh, it was just buy and sell. Uh, and uh, by just looking at those stats, uh, uh, I was able to uh, correct what I was doing wrong and uh, just continue what I was doing right. Yeah, those were the uh, main reasons for my success. Uh, and uh, yeah, I want to talk about uh, the favorite patterns which I trade. Uh, most of you who follow me uh, know these patterns by now, but uh, these are my uh, favorite patterns uh, for which I have a high degree of success. Uh, first one is uh, a bull flag pattern. Um, uh, almost every trader knows this pattern uh, and uh, it's a pretty simple pattern to trade. Um, and that's my top pattern uh, uh, to trade. And next one is a symmetrical triangle pattern uh, and um, flat top breakouts. Uh, uh, as uh, after reading O'Neill's book, uh, I started trading more uh, breakout related patterns um, as uh, stocks made new highs and uh, I've had a great degree of success with them. So uh, that's one of my favorite patterns as well. Mm -hmm. Another one is uh, uh, cup uh, with handle and cup without handle pattern. Um, those are pretty simple uh, and easy to decipher. So that's also been one of my favorite patterns. And uh, other one is a gap and go or a breakaway gap uh, uh, pattern. So uh, these uh, show up uh, during earnings season and uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, stock gaps, gaps up into all time highs, uh, um, I call them as gap and go uh, setups and uh, uh, had good success with them. And so that's one of my favorite patterns to trade. So these are the five uh, patterns which I usually trade and uh, with which I've had uh, good uh, degree of success. 
And um, next thing I want to talk about was uh, position sizing. Um, um, I used to trade uh, with uh, more size, 20% uh, size earlier when my account was small, but as my account increased, um, I got comfortable trading with uh, a lesser 10% size uh, on each trade. So right now, uh, this is uh, my position sizing rules. Uh, for each trade, I put in 10% of the portfolio into that trade. And um, I do size it up and add to that trade if required, if that uh, trade goes well. So the max size, which I can go up to is 20%. Uh, and uh, uh, the risk uh, that I'm willing to take on a trade is uh, 6%. So if I start off with 10% uh, position size, um, I'll have a max 6% risk on that rate, uh, depending on the chart. Um, and um, yeah, adding is one more uh, um, by rule criteria, which have, uh, uh, which has evolved uh, with my uh, trading style. So uh, I, do, I never used to add to that rate, but uh, uh, I've evolved my style uh, to uh, start off with small size and then add to that rate if it starts working well. So uh, whenever I uh, add uh, to a trade, I just add uh, a portion of uh, the original size, uh, which is about 2.5%. If I start off with uh, 10%, and if I start off with 20%, I um, add 5% uh, to the trade. So yeah, off late, I've been trading with just 10% uh, uh, size, uh, and that has worked well for me as my account uh, has increased and uh, 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 I just feel comfortable uh, with that size. So uh, it may not be suitable for every trader. Uh, every trader may be uh, in their uh, own uh, journey. Um, uh, they'll be in their own uh, uh, step in, uh, step of the wood journey. So uh, they some traders will start off early and may need to size up uh, more so that uh, they have a concentrated pro portfolio and uh, they can uh, exponentially increase their gains. So, this uh, strategy may also work, but uh, uh, this is what uh, I've been sticking to off late. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I wanted to go over my buy rules and sell rules as well. So uh, I have a strict set of uh, uh, nine or 10 buy rules, uh, which I stick to. Um, first one is to uh, just build a watch list. Uh, this is part of uh, the process which I follow. Uh, I build a watch list and uh, I've shared this watch list with everyone uh, uh, on uh, the public feed uh, and uh, it's publicly shared on uh, stockcharts.com as well. Um, that watch list contains of uh, the best 100 names which I'm looking at uh, at any given moment of time. And uh, from that watch list, I just pick uh, 10 to 20 or 30 stocks and build a focus list of those uh, uh, stocks. Um, and I, uh, every week I just key in on those uh, focus list stocks uh, uh, to trade. So uh, I tend to avoid all the noise elsewhere uh, if there's anything moving uh, or if there's any suggestion from any other trader. Um, I just block that noise and uh, stick to what I'm watching mm -hmm. and uh, stick to the focus list of uh, just 30 stocks uh, which I watch. Uh, and uh, the main criteria which I use uh, to select these stocks is uh, to avoid stocks below uh, 50 or 200 SMA. Um, uh, I don't like to uh, uh, trade beaten down stocks and uh, I've had varied success with them. So uh, I've just moved away from uh, uh, stocks which are below uh, 50 SMA or 200 SMA. Um, so whatever stocks I have on my watch list, most of them will be above their uh, PSMA. And uh, this uh, fifth one is to avoid stocks that are stuck in a base or in a range bound uh, uh, pattern. So um, uh, I, I've, I still trade some stocks uh, which are basing in the pattern uh, and uh, um, I've I've had varied success with them, but uh, I uh, tend to avoid stocks which are stuck in a base, and uh, uh, that is one of the buy rules which has helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, whenever i uh, tend to buy a stock i look for uh, volume confirmation so if there is uh, above average volume uh, coming up when a stock uh, breaks out uh, or uh, uh, breaks through a pivot um, i look for volume confirmation and uh, uh, that has helped to uh, avoid a few uh, less reliable trades so that is one rule uh, which i look forward to and uh, whenever i uh, uh, look for an entry in a stock i use uh, the smaller uh, intraday time frame charts the 15 or 60 minutes uh, and uh, um, using those uh, smaller time frame charts uh, helps me to uh, scout for an entry so uh, i use those uh, 15 or 60 minute charts uh, i also use 30 minute charts but it's not that often mm-hmm. um and uh, another buy rule ha- i have is uh, to not chase uh, with hundreds of stocks in our watch list uh, you are bound to miss out on uh, one or two trades mm-hmm. that move quickly so uh, one rule i've stuck to is uh, to uh, do, uh, never chase if i've missed the entry um, and uh, that has helped me to curb my uh, fear of missing out uh, or fomo um and uh, another rule i came up with uh, after reading mark pinovini's uh, a trade like a stock market wizard is to never add to a losing trade uh, uh, when a trade goes against me um, i uh, don't try to add to that trade and uh, i just stick to the stop and uh, let it play out and if it hit my st- hits my stop i get out of that trade so uh, that's one rule which has helped me not to average down on losers um uh, yeah those were the uh, nine buy rules which i have um mm-hmm. do you have any questions regarding this uh, richard yeah i i think those are a great place for people to start and i i really like to you point it out to filter out the noise because all of us are on twitter we're all giving out ideas posting charts uh but each trader has to kind of make their own process like you've done where they find a universe list 100 stocks or so and then each week filter that down to only the best best setups for their own trading style so i i think it's it's great where you're doing um on the 15 and 60 minute charts what are you looking for in terms of both price and volume that would make you buy a stock when it's right near that pivot yeah i can go through some examples once we go through the sell rules but yeah that'd be great uh what i'm mainly look, looking at is uh, the uh, levels in the chart uh, which are uh, support and resistance levels and uh, uh when a stock uh, goes through that resistance level i'm looking for volume confirmation uh, on that intraday chart so uh, that's where uh, these uh, smaller time frame charts help so you're just looking for big volume coming into the stock right near that pivot yeah especially on breakouts and uh, i've of late i've been using uh, market smith's uh, volume run rate uh, uh, metric mm-hmm. which has helped me to uh, uh, find out uh, the volume which is coming into that stock uh, uh, on that time of the day so that has helped me as well i know you talk about uh, volume bus on tc2000 uh, but uh, yeah uh, i think it's similar to what uh, uh, market smith shows um that has helped me as well um yeah i can go through the chart and show uh, an example of what i'm looking for when i enter sure and um yeah these are the a few sell rules uh, which i follow uh, i have few rules to take profits in a stock or get out of that uh, trade uh, so these are the rules which i came up with and uh, uh um i've changed these rules a bit uh, uh after i reduce my size uh when i used to trade with 20 percent size uh um uh, i used to have uh, a stricter uh, profit taking rules uh but now it's uh relaxed a bit and uh, i've uh, tweaked them a little bit so uh, my first rule sell rule is to uh, take uh, partial profits when a stock is up uh, when a trade is up more than 4% and uh, uh when a trade is up more than uh, 7% uh, i tend to take uh, another uh, portion off um 
so this is with 10% size if i start off with 10% size i stick to these cell rules uh, mm-hmm. and um, when i used to trade with 20% size uh, uh, i used to have uh, a strict profit taking rules of 3% and 5% mm-hmm. um and um, yeah once a, a trade is green uh, what i tend to do is i tend to uh, move move stock uh, stop to break even uh so even uh, if if let's say if a trade is up more than 4% uh, uh once i take partial profits off i tend to move the stop up to break even mm-hmm. and uh, uh some trades uh, just go right away and uh, some come back and uh, hit my stop uh, so uh, in any case i it will be a green trade for me so uh, setting those break even stops uh, has helped me uh, to uh, have a good high percentage high uh, degree of success mm-hmm. uh, and uh, once a stock uh, hits my break even stop i just uh, remove that stock uh, from my focus list and uh, uh, don't tend to look at that again uh, so that is one cell rule which i uh, 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 agree to and mm-hmm. uh, some stocks as i said uh, go right away uh, so if it uh, uh, if it if the trade is up more than 7% um, and if i have taken uh, some partial profits off let's say 1/4 or uh, half i uh, uh, tend to hold on to that trade and uh, let it work so if it sh- uh, shows g- uh, good relative strength uh, some stocks move uh, 10 to 20% in just a matter of weeks so uh, once uh, a stock hits uh, the 20% uh, uh, mark um, i have been following ibd's eight week hold rule mm-hmm. which has worked well mm-hmm. uh, that has helped me to uh, stick to those uh, trades and uh, let them run um and one more sell rule i have is to uh, trail stops below um, 9 or 20 ma mm-hmm. uh, most of the stocks which i uh, trade uh, uh, are usually above their uh, 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 exponential moving at just 9 or 20 ma so uh, i uh, i trail the stop is below just below that uh, when i'm in a trade mm-hmm. and uh, one more rule which i talked about is never let a, a green trade go red mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that has helped me to uh, st- stay consistent and uh, uh not have big drawdowns uh, uh in my account yeah so i i think what's great here is i think this is the reason for your consistency because both sell rules 1 2 4 and 7 are making sure that you get paid a little bit if, if the trade goes green and then you're protecting it right away and then rule 5 and and 6 as well lets your winners trend a little bit longer that last half position so i i think that's great Um I'm I'm looking to formulate something similar to this so th- this provides a lot of great ideas so uh yeah that's fantastic. Uh one question I do have is could you give like a brief definition of what relative strength means to you because everybody kind of looks at it a little bit differently um and I'd be interested in hearing your take. Yeah it's a uh, pretty simple for me uh, when uh, market is uh, not doing much uh, when it's not hitting new highs and uh, when it's making new lows uh, i look at uh, stocks on my watch list and uh, see uh, the uh, names which are green and which are making new highs mm-hmm. when market is making new lows so uh, that's where i uh, spot uh, the names which are showing a relative strength so uh, for example today uh, yesterday when the market was making new lows uh, uh, few stocks were making new highs and uh, staying green on the day so um i tend to uh, note the relative strength in those names and uh, uh tend to take them when the market turns back uh, that's perfect yeah and one more thing i wanted to talk about uh, is my strategy uh, during uh, different types of markets uh, one is a choppy market the other one is trending market and uh, the other one is a bearish uh, or uh, a recession type market uh i've not uh, traded during those recession uh, 2000 2008 2009 uh, recession time but uh, 
uh, I've witnessed multiple uh, quick corrections uh, throughout my journey. So uh, these uh, rules talk about uh, the during that market. Mm-hmm. And um, the rules which I have in choppy market is to trade less, uh, to avoid uh, micromanaging my trades, uh, to be selective. And to uh, stick to uh, names that are showing good relative strength. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, trading less means um, I tend to uh, step away from the market when it's choppy or when it's not uh, working uh, well. So um, I reduce the number of trades which I take. If I take uh, around ten to fifteen trades a week, um, I reduce that to just uh, uh, three to five trades a week. Uh, during uh, the choppy market and uh, another rule i've had is to avoid uh, micromanaging my trades um uh, what i do is i set the stop when i'm in a trade and uh, i walk away uh, from the screen so that i don't uh, micromanage it uh, when it's choppy um, as you know when the ch- market is choppy it will move up and down uh, without any reason so uh, mm-hmm. that has helped me uh, to Avoid uh, micromanaging during choppy market, and uh, one more uh, rule I have is to be selective. Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, some stocks move with the market, and some stocks uh, uh, get away from the market, and uh, uh, they tend to trade on their own. Uh, so, uh, by being selective, I uh, choose the best stocks uh, which are uh, trending in the market, and. Uh, Uh, stick to them uh, during choppy times, and um, uh, we talked about relative strength. Uh, uh, so sticking to names that are showing good relative strength mm-hmm. uh, helps me during choppy market uh, conditions. And uh, next one is during trending market. Uh, everyone loves the trending market, so uh, uh, these are the uh, five things which I do. Uh, when a market is trending uh, for example right now uh, i tend to trade breakouts uh, be it flat top breakout or a, a bull flag breakout or a symmetrical triangle breakout uh, mm-hmm. uh, whenever a breakout starts working well uh, and uh, the stock closes uh, at the uh, top half of the day so uh, that means that trade uh, break, breakouts are working in that market so uh, i tend to trade them often and uh, during trending markets i stick to leaders uh, and let them run um, again this is another strategy which has evolved over time uh, i used to trade uh, profits more uh, quickly but uh, uh, i've uh, evolved my style to let the winners run so uh, Uh, for example, with Snap right now, um, I have uh, around half size in that trade, and I'm uh, letting it run as it's working well, mm-hmm. and as it's been a leader. So uh, um, this style has evolved over time for me, and uh, I've uh, learned that letting winners run has uh, helped my account uh, uh, very well. So uh, this is one thing which has worked out well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and another one is uh, just stick to the uh, favorite patterns, uh, which I have a high degree of success with. Um, if I uh, I used to mix it up uh, by taking uh, every other uh, pattern, but uh, just sticking to a few patterns which I like has worked well during trending markets. Mm-hmm. And um, next one is uh, to press if trades are working. Uh, Uh, pressing means uh, to uh, try to get the most of the market when it's working well, and uh, t- uh, try to uh, get more exposure to the market so that uh, uh, you'll get good returns uh, when uh, the market is on your side. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I aggressively increase my exposure uh, uh, during a trending market, and um, I try to keep that exposure more than seventy uh, percent. So you're not going on margin plus seventy percent. You're just trying to stay above that level. Gotcha. Yeah, I've never traded a margin. It's always been cash for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and during uh, uh, 
declining markets or bearish markets uh, i tend to trade less and uh, stay mostly in cash um, i keep my exposure uh, less than 40% uh, so that uh, i don't uh, i won't be at the mercy of the markets and i don't uh, give up most of my gains uh, mm-hmm. uh, which i've had during trading markets so i try to keep the exposure uh, uh, less uh, and stay mostly in cash and um, uh, i uh, do a lot of homework during those uh, bearish markets uh, to s- uh, see which stocks are uh, showing good relative strength and which stocks are uh, leading the market when it's making new lows so uh, uh, i trade less during this uh, uh, market period and uh, i uh, track the stocks which are uh, leading the way so those are the few of the rules which i came up with and which I've stuck to during these years. So I just wanted to put these slides together to go over them. Yeah, that's great. And I have one question about the different market conditions. How do you differentiate between different ones? Because uh, bearish markets are pretty obvious, but recently we've been in a very choppy environment and, and breakouts weren't always working, but now we're more at all-time highs. Uh, we've seen some earnings gap ups like CrowdStrike and Zscaler. So, w- w- what kind of indicators are you watching to differentiate between these three different market conditions? Yeah, I tend to keep it simple, Richard. So, uh, when uh, when I look at a chart, uh, I usually track the indices, uh, Qs or SPY or uh, D- uh, DIA or Dow Jones. Mm-hmm. And uh, I see if they're trending uh, uh, upward or downward. so uh, as i said i'll keep that track of those uh, moving averages 20 ma or 50 sma so when um, the indices are uh, uh, breaking down below 50 sma um, i tend to get cautious and uh, if they stay below it uh, i deem them as uh, bearish markets and uh, stay mostly in cash that makes sense awesome so uh, that was a great presentation thanks thank you so much Um and now I I think you want to talk about some of your big winners from 2020 and also it'd be great if you just go through some charts and uh teach us kind of how you look at all those different um technical indicators. So there are a few names here um uh, uh and these are all uh, the winners which I've had uh uh this year so uh first one is Shop uh as a broker out of this cup and handle pattern uh I took it as soon as it broke out um, and uh, this was uh, a 7% uh, winner uh, in two weeks uh, the 7% is the average profit which i made on this trade uh, and i think i sized up uh, well enough to uh, get the most of the trade so uh, this is one of my favorite patterns which i trade uh, which i talked about uh, and mm-hmm. uh, cup and handle pattern and uh, uh i didn't uh, uh, get in uh, when it was building the base but uh, i kept an eye on it when it was making new highs and about to hit all time highs and uh, um i took it as soon as it broke out and this was one winner which i had this year uh, this one was uh, last year uh, microsoft at the end of uh, uh, 2019 december and january of 2020 mm-hmm. um market went on a, a tear uh, in the in jan or uh, beginning of the year so um, i got in microsoft um, as a broker out of this bull flag uh, and then uh, added again um, as it uh, broke out uh, from this tight consolidation pattern mm-hmm. and uh, uh, i was able to uh, uh, get get in about 7% profits in uh, 1.5 months Mm-hmm. that was one of the winner uh, and this is uh, one uh, flat top breakout which i took uh, uh, last year in uh, roku uh, i bought it as uh, it reported earnings and uh, made a gap and go move and uh, sold on all the way up uh, in hindsight i took profits uh, more quickly Uh, and uh, didn't let it ride until 120 or so but uh, i was pretty happy with the trade and uh, 
that was one of the big winners uh, last year for me um, mm-hmm. if you, if you don't mind could you go back to roku for just a second so mm-hmm. um on, on a gap and go what are you looking for intraday to tell you to get into the stock because a stock can gap up fade very quickly or it can just take off so uh, what's your entry signal to buy on a gap and go Yes. So first, uh, what I do in gap and goes is uh, I look at uh, pre-market action. Um, usually, the best ones uh, uh, stay at the top of the range in pre-market. Uh, so uh, that will be a good gauge for me to uh, uh, filter the stocks which are uh, uh, looking promising. So uh, if it's in the top of the range, uh, I tend to uh, just wait 5 or 10 minutes um, after the open and uh, take that trade uh, mm-hmm. so um, it uh, there usually be profit takers uh, soon after the open if it gaps up so uh, it it will dip a bit uh, depending on the uh, a type of stock which you're trading uh, so uh, in case of roku i think it dipped around uh, 3 to 4 points uh, soon after the open and uh, uh, I just waited for five ten minutes and uh, got in. Uh, as soon as I got in, I set a three percent stop uh, below my entry, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I entered this one with twenty percent size there. So that was a big size for me. So I uh, took profits uh, more quickly and uh, uh, aggressively. Makes sense. Yeah, and this is uh, a cup pattern, cup without handle pattern uh, in PDD. and uh, that was one of the biggest winners uh, uh last year i think uh, there are few more here i'll just quickly go through them um and the one is visa uh, which was a symmetrical triangle uh, breakout um i do believe that stocks which uh, have a, a big base uh, tend to move higher uh, more rapidly mm-hmm. uh, so when once they break out of a bigger base uh, the uh, results you can get of them uh, is exponentially higher so that was the case with uh, visa as well uh, i was able to lock in 8% uh, profits along the way mm-hmm. and and going back to visa for just a second it looks like uh, on your last sell you're waiting for it to break that um 9 ema before you before you finally sold out of your position so you were letting it trend and keeping that last half position or or whatever it was until it broke those key moving averages yeah yeah i think yeah um last one was um i i was planning to uh, keep it uh, before it broke uh, 20 ma but uh, uh i was just happy with the trade and uh, wanted to take it off as market was not looking good on that day mm-hmm. um i also use market as a gauge to uh, get out of trades or take profits more aggressively so i think this was one of those cases mm-hmm. and how do you use the rsi when while you're trading are you using it as a as a sell signal or are you looking for um oversold or overbought how are you using it um i've not used uh, i don't use it as much as i used to do uh, um Um, it's more uh, relevant on intraday time frames but uh, the daily time frames a uh, few stocks just stay uh, overbought and uh, that indicator has been uh, uh, less helpful for me so uh, whenever the stock gets extended from a moving average uh, be it 9 or 20 ma uh, those are signs uh, of a uh, uh, run coming to an end so i tend to trade uh, profits aggress- aggressively so in this case as you can see i took profits uh, when mm-hmm. it moved away from the moving average uh, and uh, yeah uh, i have not used rsi as much on daily charts um, it's more helpful for me in the intraday time frames but uh, yeah i do tend to keep it on my chart uh, just for uh, uh, just for reference yeah very interesting because i often find yeah the strongest stocks are going to look overbought but they can they can go up 20 30 um while still being overbought so uh it's not super useful as a sell indicator yeah I, as a trader more over the years uh, i've uh, tended to get away from uh, 
as many indicators as I want and uh, just stuck to price and volume. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, off late I've removed the full stochastics as well uh, on my charts. So it just shows volume, RSI, and uh, price action. Yeah, this one is a flat top breakout uh, from a, 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 a box or a channel. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, this was one of the big winners uh, which I had. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, this was also uh, in a follow through day, I think, uh, during this time. So um, uh, as you can see here, I was following this uh, channel and uh, as it bounced through the channel, um, I bought it here and sold all the way up there and uh, bought it again once it broke through this uh, base. So uh, it's not my favorite pattern, but uh, that was one of my biggest winners uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And this is a bull flag uh, setup uh, uh, when it was trending higher. So these tend to work well when a market is trending higher. So uh, this was one big winner for me. Uh, another one is a flat top breakout again uh, uh, from an uptrending stock. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was last year again. Um, and this one is this year, I think, ENPH. Um, it was a cup and handle breakout. Uh, and I entered with half size as uh, uh, this name was a bit volatile. Uh, and uh, my uh, risk on that trade was more than 5%. So I just stuck to 10% uh, or half size. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is another flat top breakout, or you can also call it a cup and handle breakout. Uh, this one worked as soon as I uh, entered the trade. So uh, I let it run for a bit and took profits on the way up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Snap was one uh, which I started tracking in uh, September uh, when uh, market was down and uh, it was in a downtrend and it was making new lows. And uh, that's where Snap uh, showed up in my uh, relative strength scans and uh, uh, it caught my eye as it was making new highs uh, mm -hmm. and uh, broke out of this cup pattern. So uh, I took one trade um, as soon as it broke out um, and then uh, uh, held on to it uh, for a month or so. And it didn't do anything, but uh, 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 as the market was making new lows, it just uh, uh, traded in, trade in a way and uh, um, I held on to it and as it broke out uh, from this tight consolidation pattern, I added more. And uh, uh, as earnings were coming up, I, I took half of this trade and uh, let the other half run uh, mm -hmm. through earnings as uh, had around a 10% to 12% cushion. So I just wanted to see how it uh, uh, goes after earnings because it was showing a good strength and it was acting as a leader. And uh, then as soon as it reported earnings, it gapped up higher and added on this uh, gap and go uh, move post earnings uh, as soon, soon after open. So uh, I added to that half trade and uh, made it a, a full size trade again and um, held through and took some profits off near 42 or 43. And uh, uh, as it was uh, working well and holding this 20 EMA, um, added more again uh, near uh, 40. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it just uh, continued to hold on to 20 EMA and uh, never get got below it. So my stop was just below this 37, 30, uh, 36 to 37 area. So um, as it didn't make any new lows, uh, held on to it. And uh, um, again, I think it made a new and I'm still in this trade, uh, about, about 10 or 12 percent right now. Yeah, it's been um, very strong. Um, so do you buy tightness down near the those key moving averages that uh, you look at the 20 EMA? Yeah, that's what I did in this case. Uh, I added on here, um, when it was holding that 20 EMA, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it had few uh, ups and downs uh, during this uh, time, but uh, I just stuck to my stop and held on to it, and uh, uh, then it worked its way higher again, and uh, uh, it's never looked back. so this is uh, turning out to be one of the biggest winners which i had this year and uh, another one was uh, palantir uh, as it broke out of its uh, ipo base uh, it caught my attention and uh, uh, in hindsight i sold it a, a bit early in year uh, 17 or so uh, and i was happy with the profits but uh, um i should have got back in again uh, as it made new highs but uh, yeah that's something to learn and uh, uh, apply to on the next trade so this one i took as it broke out of the ipo base and it was showing good uh, volume mm-hmm. let me pull up trading view so that um, i can show what i was looking at This has been a, this is a monster IPO. What a yeah. run! I don't think anyone expected this to run like that uh, in just a few weeks. Um, yeah, so this was what I was looking at when I entered this trade. Uh, so this was the base uh, which it had, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, the high on that base was around eleven forty or so, um, and uh, it caught my attention um, on that day when uh, huge volume showed up uh, as mm-hmm. you can see the volume that showed up on this day is uh, above average uh, on any other day i think it was the uh, highest uh, volume day post ipo so uh, uh, that caught my attention when it was uh, bursting through uh, this 11 uh, pivot Mm-hmm. and uh, i entered around uh, 11:30 or 11:50 and um, it just never looked back it kept trending higher uh, i took profits around 15 again around 14 and uh, 17 16 mm-hmm. um yeah and uh, it reported earnings also this on this day and uh, uh, i had uh, got a lot of most of my uh, uh, shares uh, before earnings i believe so i did take it post earnings but uh, uh, had a tight stop on it and took it off and uh, it just took off the next day and uh, uh, i made a mistake of not getting back in and uh, uh, yeah that was one costly mistake uh, which i made so yeah you lo- always learn something new in this business and um, you have to just move on and uh, learn from that mistake absolutely so that was one big winner which i had this year um other one was uh, grow generation mm-hmm. um i never traded this uh, when it was uh, in this range stuck in this range between uh, 14 to 20 22 mm-hmm. but uh, it caught my attention um, as uh, it was showing good relative strength and uh, breaking out of this uh, cup pattern Mm-hmm. so uh, and it, uh, there was good volume on that day and uh, um i think i bought it near the top on that day and uh, it just uh, never looked back and kept trending higher so um i took uh, partials off here around 32 35 then uh, uh, today um, it's been holding the 20 ma uh, since past few days so today uh, added uh, on that dip in the morning to Uh, added partials here um, as a dip around uh, 2031 uh, today mm-hmm. so i'm still in this trade and um, plan it to just hold on to it uh, with a break even stop my break even stop right now is 26 uh, which my uh, cost is right now so uh, plan is to just hold on to it with a break even stop and let it trend higher Mm-hmm. um i may take few off if it uh, breaks down this 20 ma but uh, uh, it's been showing g- good strength of late and uh, it's been a leader so Absolutely. that is one of the be- uh, biggest winners which i had here it's got a very strong prior uptrend 
Are you what, when you're doing your ads? Are you adding in the morning, or are you waiting till the close to kind of confirm that uh, really good reversal that it had today? Yeah, I don't wait until close. Uh, I've seen many traders wait until close and miss out on a big move. So um, um, I, as soon as I see uh, that it's uh, uh, fitting my criteria, I just jump onto it. Um, so. Yeah, that's one thing which has helped me not miss out on any moves uh, of late. Mm -hmm. um, that's one I had, and another one is Tesla. Um, it caught my attention as it broke out from this uh, tight uh, range, uh, above four sixty five. But uh, on that day, I was not uh, in front of the screens when it broke out, and uh, I just missed that entire move until finding it. But uh, when it consolidated here for two days, uh, I kept track of it and entered around 500, mm -hmm. uh, around 504 or 505. And uh, I took uh, partials off here around uh, 540 and uh, um, some off yesterday around 630. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm still holding half in this trade. And uh, uh, this has also been one of the biggest winners this year for me. Yeah, this this has been another of those monster stocks this year, and it, it just it breaks out so cleanly. I mean, look at all those previous um, flags during this uptrend, and then after this long base VCP, uh, just does it one more time. So it looks very strong. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, I, I think I need to update my chart uh, based on post split prices here. Yeah, all these uh, uh, levels are uh, pre split, so. So that's great. I, I love seeing how you look at charts and those clean downward trend lines. Um, would you mind sharing a few of your favorite market Smith scans and kind of talk through uh, what you're looking for to add a stock to that 100 stock watch list? Yeah. So uh, one um, uh, one scan I've learned from uh, Patrick Walker is uh, the 4040 scan, which he uses. Uh, this is a, an upgraded version of. Uh, the O'Neill scan, which we all use, uh, uh, O'Neill looks at 25% uh, uh, earnings and 25% sales growth in the previous quarter to scan. Uh, and uh, Patrick uh, looks at 40% earnings and uh, those tend to be a few of the biggest winners. So uh, I've used his scans a lot. Mm -hmm. And that is one uh, uh, major scan which I have. And that automatically uh, uh, scans uh, takes out uh, stocks which are 50 SMA mm -hmm. and um, which is good showing good uh, RS above 80 mm -hmm. which is uh, in the top 40 rank and uh, which is 20% uh, of their high and uh, it also looks for volume uh, which should be greater than uh, 100k per day mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, it uh, scans out, uh, it selects only around 40 to 50 stocks uh, every day. So that's one scan which I use often. Mm -hmm. Other one is uh, uh, the Will O'Neill scan, uh, which I use to filter out the stocks. And uh, I also use uh, the scans which you share uh, every weekend. Uh, the ones you, which you and Ben share, uh, the focus list ones, as well as the leading stocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go through each and every stock in that list and uh, 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 see if it fits my criteria. And uh, if it does, I'll add them to my watch list. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have a few uh, IP related scans uh, here. And um, China-based stocks um, and uh, the tech stocks, the cloud software uh, scans, uh, retail scans, and software scan. Mm -hmm. um, can you share the Can you share the criteria for those, if you don't mind? Yeah, this one is uh, yeah, new issues. Uh, it scans for uh, uh, names that have IPO'd this year uh, mm -hmm. and which has uh, average volume above two hundred k per day. And which is greater than five dollars. So you want to see that liquidity in, in new IPOs. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, when I uh, filter them out, I uh, 
filter them by rs rating mm-hmm. so that uh, the best stocks show up in the top i think on the one is um, china based uh, names mm-hmm. um and uh, i have strict criteria for them um to uh, make sure they are trending higher uh, above their uh, 9 ema or 10 day uh, sma mm-hmm. um then the cloud software and the and the other software yeah other one is uh, uh the i scan for high tech flags uh, which mm-hmm. uh, ray from trader line uses Mm-hmm. so this is one scanner uh, uh, which have uh, uh, based on his uh, criteria have uh, uh, come up with a scan uh, to scan for stocks which are uh, up more than 100% in uh, the past 3 months um they don't tend to work well but uh, i just uh, keep an eye on them and uh, uh, when a market uh, is on fire like what we have right now uh, these uh, names tend to work well mm-hmm. uh, one that showing up here is plug and kirk which i've uh, added to my watch list and uh, traded them off late so uh, they do uh, tend to pop a few good names uh, now and then mm-hmm. and and when you're going through a stock on on markets with are you looking for any fundamental criteria um either are you looking at the estimates i know you talked about the earnings in the scans but uh, is there anything you really like to see looking at the markets with chart uh i don't uh, as you've seen most of the names which i uh, trade i have uh, earnings of more than uh, 40 to 50% uh, in mm-hmm. the previous quarter and uh, it it would have had a steady uh, uh, growth uh, be it uh, uh, revenue or uh, eps mm-hmm. uh, so uh that's a criteria which uh, i usually follow and uh, uh main thing i do is to just look at the charts and if it's uh, trending higher and if it's green enough uh, i tend to take them mm-hmm. i don't base uh, most of my decisions just on these fundamental scans so uh, i do like uh, stocks uh, which are uh, reporting well but um, yeah uh, my selection is mainly based on the technicals mm-hmm. i think that's all i had i i use one more uh, uh, template which uh, mark minovini uses the trend template mm-hmm. uh, i've uh, used them often uh, of late but uh, yeah it's uh, just a lot of stocks uh, but uh, uh, yeah uh, that is one more uh, scam which i have on my list are there any other stocks that you really are or have your eye on or yeah this is my focus list right now uh, which has about uh, 10 to 12 stocks mm-hmm. so uh, uh, i've been looking at them uh, apps is one which has caught my eye of late uh, as it's been um, trading in a tight range uh, just about that uh, 40 three uh, resistance so um i had gotten earlier last week uh, on this uh, name as it broke out but uh, uh, it's knock back hard uh, uh, this week so i think last week itself so uh, i got out at break even uh, when it uh, reversed uh, lower so uh, i've been keeping track of it uh, and it's been acting well uh, one more is uh, etsy uh, mm-hmm. as you can see it's a cup based pattern which is uh, one of my favorite patterns and uh, uh, this one broke out of 155 and it's been acting well um so that's one catch in my eye and you talk about uh, all the names i'm in at this moment oh cool not in this one though spwr there's a solar yeah. name right yeah uh yeah ian page also has a similar chart so uh, i have uh, got uh, i've traded ian page uh, uh, now and then uh, since past uh, few weeks so this one is also on my radar uh, and it's as you can see it's holding its uptrend mhm and acting and well um, it's trending above all those key moving averages looks really strong yeah 
and align is one of those uh, large cap names uh, which has acted well uh, and um, i've been uh, i i'm in the trade uh, right now uh, and uh, pens is also one uh, name which is uh, setting up in this ascending uh, uh, triangle base mm-hmm. it's not one of my favorite patterns but uh, when the market's strong uh, these tend to break out higher uh, so this is one i'm keeping an eye on mm-hmm. nice action today along with a lot of the leading growth teams yeah i expected this to be a bit stronger but uh, uh, a few of the social media stocks like snap uh, match facebook uh, they all acted well today mm-hmm. yeah and i'm also keeping an eye on uh, z scaler uh, i managed to get in on this cap and go move uh, uh, this week mm-hmm. and uh, it's been acting well uh, along with uh, crowd strike so um i took off most of my uh, shares uh, here and i'm still in half uh, in this trade so uh, planning to add if it uh, dips to this uh, gap low area around uh, 160 mm-hmm. and um uh, uh, it should uh, uh, yeah by looking at the strength on this name uh, it should uh, trend higher uh, i've traded this name before uh, earlier this year so uh, i also took this cap and go move for trade uh, when it broke out of this base and uh, uh uh i've had a good success with this name so hoping it follows through this time uh, the same way mm-hmm. um and uh, it uh, tra- it's it moves smoothly so it's easy to trade this name mm-hmm. and uh, yeah this is one I'm keeping an eye on Yeah, it's interesting how it was a little bit stronger on the on the gap up day while CrowdStrike has fallen through a little bit more afterwards. So, yeah, I'm actually in both of those. So, uh hopefully they keep keep going higher. Yeah. We ha- we do have a lot in common. Yeah. Well, we're we're watching the same exact uh names, so. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, do you want to leave it there? I think that that's a a great presentation, a great place to stop. Um I always ask this last question to everybody who I interview um Jevany advice or um recommendations for new traders who are maybe struggling a little bit this year and are still kind of early on in the learning process. Yeah, uh what I advise them is to just uh, learn from uh, have a mentor as such and uh, learn their style and uh, try to stick to their uh, strategies or uh, rules or style. and uh, uh try to uh, trade and uh, be profitable uh, by following them and uh, uh block the noise elsewhere uh, in twitter or uh, from any other uh, expert uh, in uh, as beat news or uh, uh anywhere else uh, so just stick to uh, one mentor uh, one strategy one style of trading um, and uh, make changes along the way once you're profitable and uh, yeah just uh, learn do not follow that's great advice um awesome thank you so much for coming on the show i i i took some notes I, i'll enjoy rewatching this and editing it uh, i'm sure I'll, i'll learn something new even rewatching uh thank you guys all for watching if you did enjoy please go ahead and leave a like down below and comment if you have any questions um feel free to reach out to amug on twitter and uh i'll see you guys in future videos thank you bye